Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be running a CFD simulation of a rocket nozzle using SU2. I have other videos on how to download and install SU2, how to run SU2, and how to make the mesh that we're going to use in this video, so see links to all those videos down in the video description. Now for my other video we already made the mesh file, which is the .su2 file, and so the second file that we need to run the simulation is the configuration file, or the .cfg file, and in this configuration file we need to set some boundary conditions that correspond to the mesh that we created, and then also some input-output definitions. So let's look at the mesh that we're actually using. If you look at a schematic of the entire rocket engine, then here we have the chamber, combustion chamber, and then we have the uh, decreasing area, the converging section, and then the increasing area, diverging section. Here at the minimum area we have the throat T, and then back here we have the exit E. And so you'll note that the mesh that we're actually using is only what is outlined in red here. And this is because we don't need to simulate the entire engine itself. So what we've done is smartly chosen that the inlet to the, uh, to the mesh that we're using is right at the throat. And this is because we can specify values such as T star, P star, uh, critical pressure, critical critical temperature, sonic values, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and we also don't need to simulate the bottom because this is a symmetric, uh, the, the nozzle here is symmetric, so we can just say that there's a symmetry line at the middle, and that way we can cut our computational time down uh, because we're not solving for redundant values down here. Now let's talk about the boundary conditions, and so I'm going to blow up this red section a little bit bigger. I'm just going to quickly describe the boundary conditions on the board before we get into the configuration file on the computer. The first one that we want to talk about is nozzle, and that's the nozzle wall, and this one, since the flow cannot pass through the nozzle wall, we're going to set this one to marker Euler. The second one is the symmetry line here, which we've called symmetry, and we'll just set this to the simple marker sim. And then the outlet, uh, since we are running the simulation for a supersonic isentropic nozzle, that means that all of the flow is going to be supersonic coming out of the outlet, so we're going to set that to marker supersonic outlet. Now the last boundary condition is the inlet boundary condition, and for this one I'm going to be thinking ahead towards some of my future videos uh, when I set these values here, and so I'm going to be setting them based off of these reservoir conditions. P0 is 7 megapascals and T0 is 3600 Kelvin. Uh, and this will make it easier for us in future videos to set the back pressure to reservoir and keep it the same for all of our uh, meshes. Now these values up here are not what we're actually going to be using to set the boundary condition here because remember these are the reservoir conditions and what we need to set are the throat conditions or the sonic conditions. So we can compute these using the uh, sonic state equations that I derived in another video and we get P star and T star which are the static pressure and static temperature at the throat here. So for the actual boundary conditions for the inlet, we're going to be using marker far, which uses values from the compressible far field definition section in the configuration file. And it's a function of P star, T star, and M. We know M at the throat, the Mach number, is equal to 1 because it's a sonic throat. And P star and T star are those sonic, static, pressure, and temperature values. So what are those values of T star and P star? Well, in my method of characteristics nozzle, code here, you can see that I set P0 as 7 megapascals, T0 as 3600 Kelvin, and so PS and TS, that's P star, T star, those get calculated. So if I run this, uh, it creates the nozzle and whatever, and then if you go up here, the output it says P star, and so this is the value that we're going to be using for the for the far field definition for P star, and this is the value for the far field definition of T star. So now we're jumping over to the configuration file, which I call nozzle underscore SUP for supersonic dot CFG. We're solving the Euler equations. We're not restarting the solution, and it is compressible. And so this is the interesting part here, the compressible far field definition, and this is what we're using as the inlet definition. So the Mach number is equal to one. Uh, and then down here, the uh, free stream pressure is what we uh, computed as P star from the MATLAB code or just from the equations. And then free stream temperature is T star. And so that was really the heavy lifting part of the uh, programming here because if we go down to the uh, boundary conditions definition section, you can see that we set the nozzle to marker Euler, the inlet to marker far, the symmetry to marker sim, and the outlet to marker supersonic outlet. And so then if we go down, you can see that the number of iterations it'll be running is 10,000. It could converge before then, I forget for this case. Uh, and then when we keep on going down, we get to the input output information section. And so you can see the mesh file name is mesh underscore soup dot su2. And if we go to my folder here, you can see that I have the CFG file, which I'm looking at uh, in the text editor, and then this is the mesh file. You can see that it matches with what we have in the configuration file, and the mesh format is SU2. You go down here, we're outputting to ParaView, and then if you go down to here, this is the actual VTK or ParaView file. It's going to be output flow underscore soup, and we're going to be writing a solution every 500 iterations uh, so that we can monitor the solution. Okay, and now we can run the uh, program, so I'm going to open up the terminal, and I'm going to cd to where I keep these files, 
And if we look at that, we can see both the CFG file and the SU2 file. And so all we need to do to run it is type in SU2 CFD and then the configuration file name, press enter. And if everything works right, then it should start iterating through on the solution. Now, after the solution outputs every 500 iterations or when the solution finally converges, this is what you'll see in the same folder. So we have the configuration file, the SU2 file, and then we also have here the flow supersonic.vtk, which we can open up in Paraview. So we're in Paraview now, we can go up to this button here, press this to open the file, navigate to your folder, and then double click on the .vtk file. Nothing will pop up, so we'll press apply, and here we will see the nozzle that we just ran. So there's a few things that I wanna show you with the solution here. The first thing is if you go up to surface up here, you can click on surface with edges, and this shows you the uh, mesh that we use for this partic uh, particular simulation. We can click back to surface because then we can see everything better. Next thing we can do is switch to Mach number because that's plotting the density right now. So we switch to Mach number. Now you can see the Mach number contours along with the uh, scale over here. With the Mach number contours plotted on this part of the nozzle, we can compare this to the method of characteristic solution because from that code, you'll note that we also output the uh, nozzle mesh with the Mach number contour. So if we overlay uh, the CFD onto the method of characteristics nozzle, we can see that the Mach number actually matches up quite well. Now let's say that we wanted to get uh, quantitative instead. And so what we can do is compare the exit Mach number from the simulation with the exit Mach number from both the quasi 1D theory and the method of characteristics. And so if we click on this button up here, which is plot over line, and then we change the value, I wanna plot along the center line. So I'm gonna change the Y value at the end to zero. And so then we press apply. It'll bring up the plot over here, and this plot has a lot of different things on it. So I'm gonna go down here and click off of temperature, pressure, coefficient, pressure, and all the conservative variables. And we're left with just the Mach number variation along the center line of the nozzle. So this is at the throat, and then this is all the way over at the exit. And if you put your cursor kind of right here, you could see it's at 2.63, and that is actually very close to the 2.637 that we got from quasi-1D theory and from the method of characteristics. And the last thing we can do is just X out of this, and we're just gonna do something really visual, so we'll delete that line. And then here, what we can do is go to filters, and then if we go to alphabetical, and you go over to R for reflect, then we can reflect this to create the full nozzle. And if we go up, uh, we need to specify the plane. We wanna reflect about the Y min plane, not the X min. So if we go here, we click Y min and then apply, and you'll see that it switches back over to conservative one. So we can switch that back to Mach number. And this shows the full Mach number contour for the, for the full simulation of the rocket nozzle. So this video was just to show you how our analytical approach to rocket nozzle computations could be validated by a CFD solution for the same rocket nozzle. And the results look pretty cool too. I have more videos coming with some cool CFD results, so stay tuned for those, and thanks for watching.